So next up is uh, Evan Chang. He's going to talk about the code generator. Hi, um, again, I'm Evan. I work for Apple. Um, I'm one of those uh, crazy back-end person that Chris refers to. Um, strange people. Strange people. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Same thing. Um, so the idea of the talk is to go through every line of the code generator so you can familiarize yourself with it. So roughly it takes about three hours. So, uh, we'll, we'll do an over lunch as well. So. <laughs> The first slide is very, very important. It's, it's an actual screenshot of um, uh, uh, sort of an extreme programming in practice. Uh, how we do, uh, how do we write the code gen um, at Apple? It's, it's, it's critical. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I won't say who that person is. He likes to, you know, enforce 80 common rules, which I've never heard of. Since the late 70s. <laughs> 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 yeah, but Evan, when I transfer your code onto a punch card, it has to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but uh, I block out the parts. I mean, in case you're wondering, he is coding on your code. You know, uh, but, you know, so when they say that he rules, he actually <laughs> um, So, So the, 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 this. Kind of the, the point of my talk is not to give you too much information about code generator. It's more about uh, giving you an idea of where we stand. And you know, the more important part is actually present you with some ideas. Uh, think about what kind of stuff you would like to do and contribute to your LPN, which is the most important part of the, uh, what I try to um, convey to you. So um, let's uh, talk about targets. LBN does support uh, an increasing number of targets. Uh, we have Alpha, ARM, Thumb, Titanium, PowerPC, Spark, x86. Uh, I think uh, some crazy power here today is going to talk about Cell. Um, and somebody's contributed a big patch of MIPS uh, backend just a few days ago. And I think there's a few more secret backends um, that people may or may not want to talk about. So it's very exciting. Uh, it's also, uh, it, 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 it shows the power of the LBN infrastructure. Uh, uh, I think people can, can share their experience. It's very, very easy to add a backend, uh, add a target to LBN backend these days. Um, it's mostly understandable. And then there's the common passes. When I say all are working pretty well, uh, I mean two things. One is the infrastructure in, in, in good shape that when you add a backend, when you add a target, you are not required to do too much work. There, there might be some bugs here and there you have to fix. But the common passes are common passes. You don't have to test them in most cases. They just work. Um, another thing I mean is they work well. Uh, they are industrial strengths. They are commercial strengths. Uh, there are definitely enhancements we can do to any compiler. And there are many things we can do to all VM uh, common passes in the code area as well. But in most cases, they're, they're fine. They do a great job. Okay. Uh, so an example of such as a uh, DAG legalizer, where we take um, the target basic specified constraints of your target, what kind of types you support, or what kind of instruction you support. Uh, if you don't support uh, a division, then the legalizer will know uh, what to do uh, transform into other uh, instruction supports. For example, if you don't know, support a uh, 64-bit integer type, you'll turn that into a number of 32-bit uh, instruction, for example. Uh, the instruction selector is where the magic transferring, uh, translating from target-dependent to target-dependent uh, instruction happens. And the combiner is sort of uh, operate, again, on the DAG. Uh, that's sort of the optimizer pass in the code generator, where you do more people-type uh, optimization. Uh, again, most of these are target independent with some target hooks uh, in some cases. Um, then moving on, uh, the instruction scheduler, we use a very simple list scheduling. Uh, so it's very easy to understand. So the actual uh, sort of the, the, the core of the instruction scheduler is very tiny, uh, maybe a couple hundred lines of code, if that. Um, and we do support a number of heuristics, um, top down, bottom up. Uh, and uh, uh, whether you can target to reduce register pressure as, as your primary goal or try to reduce uh, instruction latency of the block. block. Um, so for example, x86 and ARM use the register pressure where uh, 
the scheduler and the Power PC is the PC uh, uh, focus uh, scheduler. <coughs> Risk allocator. Um, this is an area where it's getting a lot of uh, kind of attention recently. We're still using the kind of the original linear scan risk allocator back from 2003, four. Oh, the original one is the simple one. Yes. Okay. Reloaded every operand before every instruction and stored every result after the instruction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, but, but the risk allocator has proven itself to be worthy. Um, it does well in majority of cases. In, in fact, in, on x86, we do very well compared to uh, GCC, for example. Uh, on some of the targets, on some of the test programs, the risk can break down uh, when it does something stupid. Um, so there's a lot of uh, focus in, you know, on this recently. I'll talk a little more about it. Uh, Spoiler is, is, again, it's part of the risk um, Again, it does a pretty good job. It does a, a, a number of very smart things like floating loads and stores into uh, uh, instructions, for example. Uh, was there a question? Um, the risk of scavenger is a, a recent uh, new addition. Uh, it's not really part of risk risk of hater. It's more of a, a kind of facility for later passes to, uh, in case you need to materialize anything in a new in a register, you need to find scratch register. Then the risk of scavenger is there to provide the facility to find a free register using mostly local information. So you mentioned these passes are independent of targets. So when you talk about register allocation, mm -hmm. you can have targets. What is the model of the register? You assume unlimited to the registers? And no, uh, the register cable does require target information. You do have to specify register class, how many registers are, or the you know relationship to, between different classes. And at this point in time, it's operating on street address code. So these are target dependent code. So all the constraints are there. Uh, but but the, the the mechanics of the register cable itself is target independent. What uh, is the register allocator space algorithm? Uh, it's called linear scan. Uh, it's basically sort of flatten the uh, the whole uh, function into uh, you know linear kind of uh, uh, like intervals. So you kind of like intervals <coughs> intervals in them. Uh, then you can I mean well after coalescing and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's it's a uh, yeah, it has a number of extensions over there. It has a lot, so number of extensions over the, the, the basic linear scan operation because it does operate on the whole function. Uh, it does operate on um, you know, somewhat uh, after feed elimination, so it's not on pure SSD. But, you know, uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I say. So, is there any provision in the scheduler for um, optimizing relative to uh, multiple function units in the pipeline? Uh, currently, no. The, the scheduler operate on basic block. Really. Uh, this is primarily because the targets we care about most. Yes, Since there was. Uh, I, thought, I think the G5 at one point had some sort of scheduler hooks to say, I can't issue two loads in the same cycle or whatever. Well, I thought you mean the questions across different functions or blocks. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Functional units. Functional units. Oh, functional units. Oh, I mean, sorry, too. Uh, functional units, definitely. Uh, there's a way to specify the information. But well, PowerPC yeah. is the only one that does that right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, it really depends on target. Some target doesn't really care that much about it. You know, x86. X sorry, I'm sorry, too. Um, any more questions on the reciprocator? Uh, I'll get definitely kind of touch on the reciprocator a little bit more okay. in, in later slides. Um, so another kind of target uh, common pass is the lift converter, which is something I'm hacking on right now um, for the targets that uh, support predication. Um, that there's uh, branch folding, tail merging passes for CFG uh, simplification optimization, which uh, we have the expertise here to answer your questions if you have any.